I apply my military background to Falco K9. In a sense of my criteria is a little bit higher than your average company. It's not just a job to me. I know the ramifications if not done properly. Yes. We train uh, so there's not any failed deployments out there on the street. So we're outside of our facility right now. Uh, we're located in South Boston. And so up here we have our training floor. Here's where we hold one-on-one -on -one sessions as well as our day school training area. My name is Tyler Falconer. I'm 27 years old and I'm the current owner of Falco K9. Yes! We offer anywhere from uh, puppy training. Uh, we do in-home training, one-on-one uh, -on -one sessions here. We also offer protection training, scent work, board and trains, uh, as well as structured daycare, which we call the day school. I primarily work with Belgian Malinois, as well as Dutch Shepherds. <laughs> so this is Nala Sitz. Okay, girl. She's uh, four years old. She's my personal dog. All right, as well as a protection dog. And right here we have Thanos. Thanos is one of our personal protection dogs that we had sold to a family in South Boston who was dealing with some break-in issues inside their apartment. So one of my rules is if you wanna do protection work with me, you have to have good obedience because in a sense, bite work or protection work or apprehension work, whatever you wanna call it, stems from obedience. The military standards are a two minute stay from about a 50 foot distance. So with my clients, that's one of the criteria that I try to get them to meet. I like to practice uh, nonverbal communication with her. Ever since she was a puppy, whenever I step off with my left foot, she heals. Nala. And she's automatically going. When I stop walking, she comes to that sit or the down. It doesn't really matter to me. When I step off with my right, it means that she stays. And then when I get her attention, and I swing my arm just like that, she recalls. Good girl, mama. I've never met a dog that I've been unable to train, but I have met owners that I've been unable to train. And generally, they, they tie into each other. I joined the Navy when I was 18 years old. I was selected to be a master at arms. Uh, in my A school, I was selected to go canine. The specific dogs that I handled were specialized in patrol, which would be like apprehension, dogs biting, as well as explosive detection. I apply my military background to Falco K9. In a sense of my criteria is a little bit higher than your average company. I wear this bracelet every single day uh, in memorandum of you know friends that I was with in K9 school that were killed overseas. I go into it and my heart is into it. It's not just a job to me because I know the ramifications, uh, you know, if if not done properly. With our dogs, the first thing that's important to us is that we teach proper bite or gripping behavior. So this isn't exactly you know easy for her. She's going to be really elevated. Uh, right up there, and it's something that she's never done before. Nice. Excellent. Good girl, mama. That's a good mama. So what I'm doing right here, Nala is pulsing, all right? So she has a full grip as it is, so she's just clamping down with her mouth. When Nala clamps down, Jake reacts, and that's the feedback that she's getting. Nice, good girl. So scenario-based training applies realistic situations that could happen. Uh, you know, so for a protection dog, it would be a carjacking scenario, could be a, a mugging scenario. My personal favorite scenarios are when we can put stress on the handler as well as the dog. Uh, so we make the handler problem solve. So when we believe that we're actually that wounded rabbit or we're that man that's there to sort of fight the dog, uh, we hormonally change and the dog's training gets better from it. I've used a, a fog machine, I'll use fire escapes, I'll use the roofs of cars. 
Oh. I'll just throw anything at the dog that could be that handler's uh, worst day, you know, of his whole life. And I'll just take that, I'll try to emulate that the best that we can. So um, that way the dog has at least seen it in training and is less likely to have a deployment failure. All right, so in this specific situation, uh, we're using a real street, real red light, uh, real atmosphere around here. Uh, so what we're gonna do is Jake's gonna pull up to the red light and I'm just going to mimic sort of like a carjacking scene. Uh, so I'm gonna try to reach in, reach for Jake, and uh, hopefully Thanos takes my arm, uh, nothing else, and you know we'll work it from there. So right here is where he punctured. Um, I felt a ton of pressure from him on that bite. Uh, I would really, really hate to get bit by him for real. There's no question in my mind that he's breaking bones if he has a live bite. When I think about like where everything started and where it, it is now, uh, I, I'm just blown away uh, beyond words. Just I can't help but think, but so many things had to go a specific way, and so many things had to go right for me that I definitely don't take it for granted. That uh, you know, I'm one of the luckiest men in the world. The fact that I get to do this every day and and, and be really passionate about my job doesn't get any better than that.